Phonology, Wikipedia article audio. Phonology is a branch of linguistics concerned with the systematic organization of sounds in languages. It has traditionally focused largely on the study of the systems of phonemes in particular languages, but it may also cover any linguistic analysis either at a level beneath the word or at all levels of language where sound is considered to be structured for conveying linguistic meaning. Terminology Phonology also includes the study of equivalent non-oral languages such as ASL or other sign languages. The word phonology can also refer to the phonological system of a given language. This is one of the fundamental systems which a language is considered to comprise, like its syntax and its vocabulary. Derivation and Definitions Phonology is often distinguished from phonetics. While phonetics concerns the physical production, acoustic transmission, and perception of the sounds of speech, phonology describes the way sounds function within a given language or across languages to encode meaning. For many linguists, phonetics belongs to descriptive linguistics, and phonology to theoretical linguistics although establishing the phonological system of a language is necessarily an application of theoretical principles to analysis of phonetic evidence. Note that this distinction was not always made, particularly before the development of the modern concept of the phoneme in the mid-20th century. Some subfields of modern phonology have a crossover with phonetics in descriptive disciplines such as psycholinguistics and speech perception, resulting in specific areas like articulatory phonology or laboratory phonology. History The word phonology comes from ancient Greek phiomeganu, phn, voice, sound, and the suffix logi. Definitions of the term vary. Nikolai Trubetskoy in Grundzüchter Phonology defines phonology as the study of sound pertaining to the system of language, as opposed to phonetics, which is the study of sound pertaining to the act of speech. More recently, Lass writes that phonology refers broadly to the subdiscipline of linguistics concerned with the sounds of language. While in more narrow terms, phonology proper is concerned with the function, behavior, and organization of sounds as linguistic items. According to Clark Etal, it means the systematic use of sound to encode meaning in any spoken human language, or the field of linguistics studying this use. Analysis of Phonemes Early evidence for a systematic study of the sounds in a language appears in the 4th century BCE Ashtadhyayi, a Sanskrit grammar composed by Pini. In particular the Shiva Sutras, an auxiliary text to the Ashtadhyayi, introduces what may be considered a list of the phonemes of the Sanskrit language, with a notational system for them that is used throughout the main text which deals with matters of morphology, syntax, and semantics. Other Topics in Phonology The study of phonology as it exists today is defined by the formative studies of the 19th century Polish scholar Jan Baudouin de Cordonnet, who shaped the modern usage of the term phoneme in a series of lectures in 1876-1877. The word phoneme had been coined a few years earlier in 1873 by the French linguist A. Dufrich des Genets. In a paper read at the 24th of May meeting of the Société de Linguistique de Paris, Dufrich des Genets proposed that phoneme serve as a one-word equivalent for the German Sprachlot. Baudouin de Cordonnet's subsequent work, though often unacknowledged, is considered to be the starting point of modern phonology. He also worked on the theory of phonetic alternations, and may have had an influence on the work of Saussure according to E. F. K. Kerner. An influential school of phonology in the interwar period was the Prague School. 
One of its leading members was Prince Nikolai Trubetskoy, whose Grundsuchter Phonology, published posthumously in 1939, is among the most important works in the field from this period. Directly influenced by Baudouin de Cordonnet, Trubetskoy is considered the founder of morphophonology, although this concept had also been recognized by de Cordonnet. Trubetskoy also developed the concept of the archiphoneme. Another important figure in the Prague school was Roman Jacobson, who was one of the most prominent linguists of the 20th century. In 1968 Noam Chomsky and Morris Halley published The Sound Pattern of English, the basis for generative phonology. In this view, Phonological representations are sequences of segments made up of distinctive features. These features were an expansion of earlier work by Roman Jacobson, Gunnar Fant, and Morris Halley. The features describe aspects of articulation and perception, are from a universally fixed set, and have the binary values and or. There are at least two levels of representation underlying representation and surface phonetic representation. Ordered phonological rules govern how underlying representation is transformed into the actual pronunciation. An important consequence of the influence SPE had on phonological theory was the downplaying of the syllable and the emphasis on segments. Furthermore, the generativists folded morphophonology into phonology, which both solved and created problems. Notes Bibliography Natural phonology is a theory based on the publications of its proponent David Stamp in 1969 and in 1979. In this view, phonology is based on a set of universal phonological processes that interact with one another which ones are active and which are suppressed is language-specific. Rather than acting on segments, phonological processes act on distinctive features within prosodic groups. Prosodic groups can be as small as a part of a syllable or as large as an entire utterance. Phonological processes are unordered with respect to each other and apply simultaneously. The second most prominent natural phonologist is Patricia Donegan, there are many natural phonologists in Europe, and a few in the US, such as Jeffrey Nathan. The principles of natural phonology were extended to morphology by Wolfgang U. Dressler, who founded natural morphology. In 1976, John Goldsmith introduced autosegmental phonology. Phonological phenomena are no longer seen as operating on one linear sequence of segments, called phonemes, or feature combinations, but rather as involving some parallel sequences of features which reside on multiple tiers. Autosegmental phonology later evolved into feature geometry, which became the standard theory of representation for theories of the organization of phonology as different as lexical phonology and optimality theory. Government phonology, which originated in the early 1980s as an attempt to unify theoretical notions of syntactic and phonological structures, is based on the notion that all languages necessarily follow a small set of principles and vary according to their selection of certain binary parameters. That is, all languages' phonological structures are essentially the same, but there is restricted variation that accounts for differences in surface realizations. Principles are held to be inviolable, though parameters may sometimes come into conflict. Prominent figures in this field include Jonathan K., Jean Lowenstam, Jean Roger Vernyad, Monique Charette, and John Harris. In a course at the LSA Summer Institute in 1991, Alan Prince and Paul Smolensky developed optimality theory and overall architecture for phonology according to which languages choose a pronunciation of a word that best satisfies a list of constraints ordered by importance 
a lower ranked constraint can be violated when the violation is necessary in order to obey a higher ranked constraint. The approach was soon extended to morphology by John McCarthy and Alan Prince, and has become a dominant trend in phonology. The appeal to phonetic grounding of constraints and representational elements in various approaches has been criticized by proponents of substance-free phonology, especially by Mark Hale and Charles Rice. An integrated approach to phonological theory that combines synchronic and diachronic accounts to sound patterns was initiated with evolutionary phonology in recent years. An important part of traditional Pregenerative schools of phonology is studying which sounds can be grouped into distinctive units within a language, these units are known as phonemes. For example, in English, the P sound in pot is aspirated while that in spot is not aspirated. However, English speakers intuitively treat both sounds as variations of the same phonological category that is of the phoneme slash p slash, were interchanged with the unis pirated in spot, native speakers of English would still hear the same words, that is, the two sounds are perceived as the same slash p slash dot. In some other languages, however, these two sounds are perceived as different, and they are consequently assigned to different phonemes. For example, in Thai, Hindi, and Quechua, there are minimal pairs of words for which aspiration is the only contrasting feature. Part of the phonological study of a language therefore involves looking at data and trying to deduce what the underlying phonemes are and what the sound inventory of the language is. The presence or absence of minimal pairs, as mentioned above, is a frequently used criterion for deciding whether two sounds should be assigned to the same phoneme. However, other considerations often need to be taken into account as well. The particular contrasts which are phonemic in a language can change over time. At one time, and, two sounds that have the same place and manner of articulation and differ in voicing only, were allophones of the same phoneme in English, but later came to belong to separate phonemes. This is one of the main factors of historical change of languages as described in historical linguistics. The findings and insights of speech perception and articulation research complicate the traditional and somewhat intuitive idea of interchangeable allophones being perceived as the same phoneme. First, Interchanged allophones of the same phoneme can result in unrecognizable words. Second, actual speech, even at a word level, is highly co-articulated, so it is problematic to expect to be able to splice words into simple segments without affecting speech perception. Different linguists therefore take different approaches to the problem of assigning sounds to phonemes. For example, they differ in the extent to which they require allophones to be phonetically similar. There are also differing ideas as to whether this grouping of sounds is purely a tool for linguistic analysis, or reflects an actual process in the way the human brain processes a language. Since the early 1960s, theoretical linguists have moved away from the traditional concept of a phoneme preferring to consider basic units at a more abstract level, as a component of morphemes, these units can be called morphophonemes, and analysis using this approach is called morphophonology. In addition to the minimal units that can serve the purpose of differentiating meaning, phonology studies how sounds alternate, i.e. replace one another in different forms of the same morpheme, as well as, for example, syllable structure, stress, feature geometry, accent, and intonation. Phonology also includes topics such as phonotactics and phonological alternation as well as prosody, 
the study of suprasegmentals and topics such as stress and intonation. The principles of phonological analysis can be applied independently of modality because they are designed to serve as general analytical tools, not language-specific ones. The same principles have been applied to the analysis of sign languages, even though the sublexical units are not instantiated as speech sounds.